How's it going today, guys? This is Kelly, the Flicker Guy, and uh, I just wanted to stop by and just uh, ring your ears just for a little bit. It's been a week and a few days or so of having the ban of those four crazy cards, Mana Crypt, Jewel Lotus, Dockside, and Nadu. And I just wanted to kind of touch base with everybody real quick before we move on to other things. I know we had the Dust Morn, re Dust Morn release, and that was awesome. Loving the set. It is hard to pull the Wanderer though. The Wanderer Rescuer. So weird. I thought she would be readily available. I did get my Nashi as well. And I did build that deck. It's amazing. But um, to talk about those banned cards. I just kind of wanted to give a, a little insight to what I've kind of seen as from day to day as I play games or whatnot. So yeah. We'll just hop on into that one or whatnot. Um, yeah. I played it. I've been playing against multiple people in my play group and a couple of guys outside of the play group um, there's still some bitterness about that band because people lost money a lot of people invested heavily into that that whole jewel lotus thing and the mana cribs and you know a little hurt when that kind of came and lost a lot of money on it but it is the name of the, it's the nature of the game so the coast is not recognized the secondary market so it's kind of one of those things where hey you know, you win something, you lose some. If you want to look at it like it's a stock market, it's like a stock market. Because we can go to those other uh, retailers and things that happened a few years back where we had that meme stock go up and everything. So, you win some, you lose some. But as far as the gameplay goes for the players, I just wanted to kind of give my insight of what I've seen. Of course, I always talk to everybody. I haven't had anybody try to en endorse the, the Rule Zero to where they can keep their mana crypts and jewel lotuses in, which has been nice because you don't have to kind of compete with that or try to rebuttal it or anything like that. So most people were like, hey, we're going to go with the rules. We're going to move forward. Game wise, to be honest, there hasn't been much of a change. Yes, you lost some of those fast mana rocks and some of those uh, old powerful creatures. But with that being the case, if the deck is good. So I've still seen decks that go fast because if you're playing Simic, you go fast. If Cricket's table is going to go fast. If you have a mono red burn deck, it's probably going to go fast. So it's one of those things where you haven't really seen a degradation in any of the, the gameplay. Ultimately, people have swapped out some of their cards, put in some new rocks, or kind of tailored their strategy a little bit to kind of change up and put new decks. I myself, I've never really ran Mana Crypt. I did have Jewel Lotus in a couple of decks, but I really only had it for things like Nico where Nico, she can come out really quick. I mean, she's a newer card. I was already kind of building it. Then the, the band happened. I was like, well, let me take my Jewel Lotus out because we're not going to be doing turn two Nico or turn yeah, turn two, uh, turn one Nico, really. We're not going to do that. But that doesn't really slow down my game plan. It just allows me to kind of put a little bit more lands on the field, build up a little bit of protection, um, a little bit of flicker to get her out of the way if somebody tries to remove her. So I, it's much the same. I'm pretty sure it happens with all the other decks. Is basically you do the work around, you make it happen, you make it work. It's one of those things where we as deck deck builders coming into Magic, being a part of Magic, we've been able to brew all these crazy decks. And so when you ban something, you just take the time to brew something else or make alterations to that deck. So it does force you into making a difference which is really cool making a whole new deck kind of reworking some decks that you had because it makes it more exciting so if i've seen you know the tegra deck for the fifteen thousand time if you had to make some changes to it you know what you make some changes to it it might be a little bit more fun to play against or it might be more interesting so that's kind of what i've noticed with all that being said um, overall i've seen games kind of mellow out in some sense because like i said i could just be a small trial factor don't, don't take my word for gold but it's one of those things where what i've experienced personally we have a player in our play group who's really good really fast really strong he uses those mana rocks and so of course those came out of his deck it slowed him up a little bit didn't make him any less dangerous <laughs> because if he wants to one shot you he still one shot you, but it, it allowed people to be able to put up resources, put up things on the board to be competitive. And I think a more balanced game is a much more fun game. It's one of those things where, yes, you want to talk about your rule zero of power level. So you, nobody's bringing out, me bringing out a Sataru deck, and then I'm going up against your, your 
uh, super friends hug uh, hippopotamus deck or whatever and it's like oh you can't compete with me so as long as you're not doing that i think it's really fun and not having a mana rocks didn't change much of anything not seeing dock side is neither here nor there i haven't seen anybody get uh, tilted over i haven't seen anybody uh, lose out because they didn't have their dock side like i said you just basically don't expect to have as many treasures because i've seen people build treasures with all the kind of stuff it's so many cars and magic at this point ain't your copper dragon itself hits you, makes a lot of magic. I mean, makes a lot of uh, treasures. Cow bone hits you, makes a ton of treasures. So treasures are gonna be there one way or the other. You're just not turn one and turn two in a dock side and having a plethora of, of treasure. So that's cool. And Nadu was always on the hit list anyway when the moment he came out. So he's neither here nor there. It uh, hurts that he has since him, since he's departed, the Umbral Mantles and the Shakus of the world have went back down. So that was kind of nice to see uh, the Shukos kind of go up in value. An uh, old car from Kamigawa that I had like a dozen of just, just shot up in price. So that's kind of cool. That's the one thing I do like about Magic when you they have a new car come up that gives credence and an importance to old cars from Magic that people might just have sitting there being somewhere uh, just, just laying around. It's like, oh, cool, I can bring this back out of the woodworks and, and pop off. So hopefully we see more of that in the future. But like I said, with the band stuff, I, I say, hey, it hurts because of the, the monetary value. But from the gameplay aspect, I think it's, it didn't do too much on the negative side. I think it might have helped out some people. It uh, basically keeps people from crafting that perfect hand all the time. And so you can mulligan trying to get all your rocks to have that fast turn in the beginning and lose out on some stuff. Or you can just, hey, let me play Magic, you know, go regular with, with a decent speed deck and you'll be good. It just allows people to, to build more diverse decks. And I think in Magic, that is the big key to why we do this is the diversity and hanging out with friends. Killing people on turn two, turn three, unless you're playing CDH probably is not the ideal thing for a casual game because people want to see their cars do stuff you know so you build that deck you take all the time to brew something you want to see it work and unless you're in that higher tier format of cdh i think you have that want and need to be able to do more but have a level playing field and a slower paced game so yeah i'm not a cdh player so i can't speak from that point or whatnot hopefully they can do something for you guys whether that's separating the formats or whatever the case may be to make it to where you can get those fast rocks or we just go without it and see how it goes. But we'll see. That's on another take. Like I said, I'm not an expert on that, so I can't be the one to speak on that one. So I'm going to leave that one as is. But I do have some more content coming, guys. We're going to get some more games. Uh, we've been in the process of trying to get some games recorded for you. So that'll be kind of exciting. Definitely try to talk about some other things and get some more people, some more guests on here to like sit and talk with you guys. I think that'll be fun and we can talk about some of our decks, some of our ideas, and what our hopes and dreams are for the future of Magic because with the new foundation set coming up that's going to kind of reinvigorate Core as a whole and I think it's going to define what they, what Wizards is looking for from the bottom line of what Magic is. So hopefully we'll get some ninjas seeing that we have Kaito coming as a planeswalker in the set since Jace is no longer the ideal hero uh, in the face of magic kaito will be taking up the blue mantle so maybe we'll see some uh kamigawa cards if anything some ninjas some new ninjas go with him because clearly his new ninja card who does ninjutsu if you're playing standard there's only two ninjas in standard now we need more ninjas right <laughs> so hopefully we'll get some ninjas in core which would be cool get some reprints and make some new art that'd be fire because nashi and kaito can't do it alone they need more ninjas and the line of transformation is not the answer. So don't give me that one. We are not saying that every creature is a ninja. I don't do the change and stuff. But yeah, that's all guys. I wanted to just kind of reach out, talk to y'all, put up a video and uh, got some more coming soon. We will talk in the future. Y'all have a good one. Stay locked, like, subscribe, ring that bell. And uh, yeah, the gathers in the black.